Now we've solved a multiple angle equation using a graphical approach. Now we're going to attempt to solve a multiple angle equation using an algebraic approach. And we're going to use a modified version of these three steps here to solve for uh, the multiple angle. And here's our example, example number two, sine two x is equal to negative one half. So we're going to find the domain of the multiple angle. If we're looking for x's that are between zero and two pi, as it says down here, then that means that the two x Think about each of these multiplied by 2. So this is going to be 0, and this is going to go all the way to 4 pi. Now if you think about it, we're taking all the answers that go for 2x that go all the way to 4 pi, so that when we take half of them, we can find the x's that are within 0 to 2 pi. Now, this step 2 is really taking, uh, I don't know, this other x, this weird looking x, and making it equal to this 2x so that we treat that as, as one angle. And then we can solve these equations like we have in the past. And then we're going, going to add the period of the trig graph of the multiple angle to each of the answers until we cover all the domain here that we need. So let's take a look at this example. We have sine 2x is equal to negative half. What I'd like to do is translate it so that we're really solving for this sine x is equal to negative one half. That way we can later say that the big X here is equal to 2x and that means that x is going to be always half of what the big X is going to be. Using that then we can think well let's solve sine of this x is equal to negative a half. That means that for the reference angle this the reference angle here is going to be the sine inverse of disregarding the negative, just doing the one half. And we can recognize this as a special angle. We might know what it is. If not, we can just plug this into our calculator and we would get this 30 degrees or pi over 6. Well, with this diagram here, because the sine ratio is negative, we can just draw a little picture. Remember sine, think of sine as y. And it's going to be in this quadrant and this quadrant. And there should be symmetric there. But that means that the one answer is going to be pi plus that reference angle. And the second one here is going to be 2 pi minus that reference angle. And if we continue, then we can say, well, that means that x1 is going to be equal to pi plus pi over 6, which is equal to 7 pi over 6. And the second one is going to be equal to 2 pi minus pi over 6. So that's equal to 11 pi over 6. So then step 3 tells us that we're going to add the period then until we get all the answers to cover this domain. And the domain we're talking about is covering this domain all the way to 4 pi and then we will take half of it and, and look, take a look. So here the next one on this one, if we add 2 pi, which we're going to add 12 pi over 12, uh, 6. So that way it's going to be 7 plus 12, which is 19 pi over 6. And if we added another one, we would be way past 4 pi. Think about this is 3 times 6 is 18. And if we added another 12, that would be 31, which is past 4 pi. Now what about the other one? Well here 11 pi over 6 plus your 12 pi over 6 is going to get your 23 pi over 6. Then we should recognize that if it went over 24 pi over 6 that's past 4 pi. So we have our answers from 0 all the way to 4 pi of the, the that x value, that weird x that's 1, 2, and this is another family as well. Okay, And now we're going to say, well, each x, each actual x, is going to be equal to half of these values. So therefore, we can talk about x1 being 7 pi over 6, but divided by 2, right? So that's going to be equal to 7 pi over 12. And the same thing here, 19 pi over 6, half of that is going to be 19 pi over 12. What about the other one? Well, the other, the other value, x2, 
is going to be equal to this 11 pi over 6 divided by 2. So that's going to be equal to 11 pi over 12, and then 23 pi over 12. And these are the four answers to x within 0 to 2 pi. So let me see if I can clean that up a little bit here. We, we have x1 is equal to 7 pi over 12, 19 pi over 12, and then x2 is equal to 11 pi over 12, and 23 pi over 12. Well, let's take a look at the general solution then. The general solution of sine 2x minus a half, if we remember, then we, well, let's just take a look at the exact value. So I'm just going to, uh, the exact values here. The exact values for this domain is 7 pi over 12, and then 19 pi over 12. And then the second one is 11 pi over 12, and then 23 pi over 12. Well, let's take a look at each of these. If we took a look at how we get from here to here, oh, that says 19. From here to here, can we see that we just added 12 pi over 12? Well, that's interesting. And then from here to here, we added 12 pi over 12. So in fact, we can determine this, the solution here is that x1 is equal to 7 pi over 12 plus 1 full pi, and it could be any multiple of that, where n is any integer. And over here, we could say that the second solution is going to be 11 pi over 12 plus 1 full pi and any multiple of that, integer multiple. And so this is the general solution. Well, why is the general solution? Well, you can think here, the general solution consists of answers that differ by just pi radians, not the 2 pi for the sine of just a single x, but it's because the graph of sine 2x has a period of not 2 pi anymore, but 2 pi divided by 2, so it's just pi. So I'll leave part D to you to use a graphing calculator to verify that these are the solutions. But I am going to back up here and just make a little line here because I have a slightly different method for determining the general solution of this equation. Now we determined, we were talking about x here, the general solution of x we found was going to be 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, where n is any integer. And then for the second one, then it was 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, n being any integer. And then we just added 2 pi just because we wanted to find out the solutions within 0 to 4 pi. But taking a look at each of these solutions, remember that x was equal to, uh, so 2x was equal to x. So that means that little x here is equal to this big x divided by 2. So let's take this general solution, this whole expression here, and divide by 2. So that means x here, being half of x1, is going to be equal to half of 7 pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 12, plus half of this one is just pi n. And then for the second one, we have this x2 is equal to 11 pi over 6 divided by 2, which is 11 pi over 12, plus pi n, where n is any integer. So what we thought of is taking the whole general solution here and then dividing it by 2, and then we get the same result as the general solution here. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at class example number 3. We have this following information. The distance above the ground of a student on a circular Ferris wheel is given by this equation. h of t is equal to negative 4 cos pi over 12 times t, then plus 5 h is the distance above the ground in meters, and t is the time in seconds when the student is at the lowest point of the ride for the first time. So t is the time in seconds, I guess, from when the student is at the lowest point of the ride for the first time. So let's determine the time it takes for the Ferris wheel to make one complete rotation. So maybe it's in the words. Maybe it tells us 
that it takes so many seconds for the Ferris wheel to go all the way around. And it doesn't look like it tells us in the words, so maybe it's in the equation. Well, when we're talking about one complete rotation, really, we're looking for one period here of this cosine graph. So taking a look at this value, this is the B value, and we know that the B value suggests the period. In fact, we know that the period is equal to 2 pi divided by B. So using this equation, then, uh, we can determine what T is. So if we continue this, we have 2 pi, and the B value is this pi over 12, pi over 12. Well, knowing how to divide fractions, then we can say we keep the first one the same, and in the same step, we take the reciprocal of the second one and change that division to a multiplication. So 2 pi times 12 over pi. We can see then that these 2 pi's cancel, and we have uh, what's left is 2 times 12. So this is 24. Taking a look at the units of time, this is seconds. So we're talking about seconds here. So it takes 24 seconds to for the Ferris wheel to make one complete rotation. Well, let's t tackle part B here. We want to algebraically determine the times during the first minute of the ride when the student is seven meters above the ground. Now we know that the, the formula or the equation for the height is h of t is equal to negative four cos of pi over 12 t and then plus five. So when is it the student going to be seven meters above the ground? Well, what we can say is we can say let the height be equal to seven in meters and h is measured in meters, so let h equal 7. Well, in that case, then we can say that 7 should equal our negative 4 cos pi over 12 t and then plus 5. Well, now we can just solve this algebraically. So let's, so let's see. I think what we should do then is subtract 5 from each side, and when we do that, then we will have 2 is equal to negative 4 cos uh, pi over 12 t. And then what we want to do is we want to isolate this cos pi 12 over t all by itself, make it equal to a value, and then we're solving uh, an equation that we, we are used to. So I think we should take this negative 4 and divide by negative 4. So Let's just take this whole thing and divide by negative 4, which means that this is going to be divided by 4. So when we have that, we will have negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. And that's equal to these cancel now. Uh, so the, those will cancel. And then we will have cos of pi over 12 times t. Well, this looks a little bit uh, scary for us, but what we want to do and, and the method I've used before is that I'm going to just uh, switch the left and right sides here and say I'm going to think of this as cos x is equal to negative a half. Then we re can relax a little bit. This is just one angle. But then we have to remember this x and we can know that that x is equal to pi over 12 t. And then we can say well we know then that t is going to be equal to 12 times this x divided by pi. But that's after we find out what x is. So taking a look at cos x equaling negative a half, this is a solvable equation. We can see that x is equal to this cos inverse. And remember, we're going to disregard the negative so that we can just get the reference angle. So let me just say that that's the reference angle, 1 half. We can recognize this as a special angle, or we can just use our calculator to say cos inverse of a half, and we can find out that this is going to be 60 degrees, or pi over 3. Now, with cos being a negative value, we can draw this right here and say cos representing x, equivalent to x on a unit circle, then this is going to be in quadrant 2 and 3, it's going to be negative. So therefore, the skeleton of this is going to that is 2, sorry, pi minus that reference angle, and the other 
angle is going to be pi plus the reference angle. Now we just found out what the reference angle was. This is the reference angle right here. So what we can do then is, let's just move it up here and say that, so we can say that x1 then is equal to pi minus the reference angle, which is pi over three. And we get two pi over three. For x2, it's going to be pi plus the reference angle, so that's plus pi over three. And we get four pi over three. So those are the two answers. And then if we were to find our general one, it would be you know two pi over three plus your two pi n being n being an integer and so on, right? And then this one would be four pi over three plus two pi n where n is any integer here. But let's take a look at this domain here. So we're talking about this multiple angle. We're, we're saying zero between uh, pi over 12 t is going to be one period. So we're taking a look at the one period. That means that zero here is, if we divide by pi over 12, then that means the t is going to be between zero and 24 seconds. So in that case, what we have as our two pi for the period of this one, then the t is going to be 24. So that means that t one is equal to this 12, 12 times x one and divided by pi. So let's see what this is. We have two pi over three times 12 and divided by pi. And we can see that the pi's will cancel and we have this is equal to two times 12, which is 24 divided by three, and this is eight, and it's gonna be eight seconds. Well, what about the other one? So T2 is equal to X2, so right there, four pi over three times 12 over pi, and where did this 12 over pi come from? Well, we know that T is equal to 12 times this X value divided by pi. So then we can see that these pi's will cancel, and we would have 48 divided by three, and that's equal to 16. So we have two cases here, these two family of solutions, eight seconds, and then we can add the period. So in one cycle here, we can think, well, maybe at eight seconds and 16 seconds is when the student is gonna be at seven. But here, looking at the question, it says during the first minute of the ride. So we need to, to take these values and keep going until we find all the solutions. So we have eight plus the period uh, for t. The period for t is 24 seconds. So we'll keep adding. So eight, eight is the first one, then eight plus the period, uh, which is going to be 24. And then we can add another one. So maybe eight plus two periods. So this is gonna be 48. And then I think this is gonna be over a minute because that. Uh, on the next one is going to be over 60 seconds. But what about the other one? So we have 16, and then of course it's going to be 16 plus the period. So that's going to be 24. And then we can say, well, the next one is going to be 16 plus two of these periods. So this is 48. I think this should be over 60 as well. So let's figure out what these are. So it looks like we have the solution of eight seconds, and then eight plus 24 is 32. And then eight plus 48, oh, that stays under a minute, it's 56, so it's 56. And then for the other branch, then you can say that 16, and then 16 plus 24 is 40. And then 16 plus 48, so 10 plus 40 is 58. And then this is 66, but that one's not gonna count because that's over 60 seconds. So we have these, five times when the student will be at seven meters at eight seconds, 32 seconds, 56 seconds, 16 seconds, and 40 seconds. So in order, eight, 16. So let's put them in order here. So the student will be, be at seven meters at eight seconds, 16 seconds, 32 seconds, 40 seconds, and 56 all in seconds. I will leave it to you to verify using a graphing calculator, but that's it. Uh, you're ready for your assignment and I will see you in class.